What's up guys? So hopefully in this video, I'm going to be highlighting some key aspects of why Bitcoin is so important. I know many of you have been asking me, hey Amir, can you show me some real world examples of how does it benefit us? Well, there's a couple of things I want to first state. Number one, when I refer to Bitcoin, I'm actually referring to the underlying technology known as blockchain. You've heard of Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, Dash, Monero, all these cryptocurrencies. Well, these cryptocurrencies function on the blockchain platform. Without the blockchain platform, these, these uh, cryptocurrencies can exist. So you have to first understand what Satoshi Nakamoto did about eight years ago with Bitcoin. He was able to solve the problem of manipulating code. See, before him, there was nothing stopping me from copying, pasting code, saying it's five bucks, and sending it out to multiple people. There's no intrinsic value for code. Through the blockchain, he was able to solve that problem. So I can't manipulate code. If I send five Bitcoins to that person, I don't have that code anymore. That person has it. If he sends it to somebody, he doesn't have it anymore. Another person has it. So now code has intrinsic value. When we look at, say, the blockchain or Bitcoin precisely, what it truly does, it actually empowers you as an end user because we got to first understand our monetary system currently, our fiat Federal Reserve System. It is a central bank reserve system. They tell you what the interest rate is. There is no set limit because they function on Keynesian economics as opposed to Austrian economics, which kind of Bitcoin is a backbone of. So with Keynesian economics, basically what they're doing with the central bank is they control what currency you can use. They can print on demand, known as quantitative easing. They set the interest rate and at any given time they can manipulate the currency. Great book to read is Currency Wars. I'll leave a link below this video. So we're at the mercy of the Federal Reserve System, this, res this central bank that keep in mind is not backed by gold anymore and keep in mind when they give money to the banks the banks only have to have 10% so called 10% of what they lend them to so they can lend it out to everybody else so literally one dollar can become ten dollars so it's actually fake money that money doesn't exist and that's why we're in trillions and trillions of dollars in debt however with Bitcoin there is no such thing as quantitative easing there's, there's no such thing as a central bank it's a decentralized system it's a preset algorithm that sets it to 21 million Bitcoins. So in the history of Bitcoin, in the near future, there's only gonna be 21 million mined Bitcoin. And how the algorithm is set, there is no, you can't have inflation, you can't have print more Bitcoin, you can't control the interest rate, you can't control anything. It's a true decentralized peer-to-peer -peer system that can store value. And that's why I consider Bitcoin kind of like digital gold. If you look at the history of Bitcoin, it's quite fascinating what capabilities it's been doing so far. For example, WikiLeaks wouldn't be around today if it wasn't for Bitcoin. They shut down all the PayPals and Visas uh, for WikiLeaks with uh, Julian Assange until they start accepting Bitcoin. And what Bitcoin does is this. It empowers you and I to vote and have more options. What I mean by voting is right now you and I don't have any other options to use currencies. We use a Federal Reserve currency. We're at the mercy of their interest rate. We're at the mercy of devaluation of the currency. We're at the mercy of the banking system. All these oligarchy cabal type of systems. Some are good, some are bad. Okay, it's not, let's not just paint it, uh, you know, all bad, but some are good. But with Bitcoin though is you are your own bank and you set the terms. See, you can buy Bitcoin, have it on your phone, and it can be more secure than your bank account. Through your own voting, what I mean by voting is your right to, your right for an action. I can now send money to my cousins around the world. I can send money to my business in Hong Kong if I want. With, you know, I can just pull it up right now. Literally with a click of a button. So I can pull up one of the apps. And what's beautiful about this is this. Think about all the people around the world. For example, Venezuela right now, they're going through all the issues with uh, post-socialism. And the country is so poor that people are actually going inside zoos and killing zoo animals for food. You understand, it's right now, it's hell right now on Earth in Venezuela and many other Latin American countries and a lot of African countries. And obviously they have no currency. I know people right now in Venezuela that they're surviving off of Bitcoin. All they need is an internet connection and people can help them. I can now, as long as they have a phone, a simple phone, they don't even need a phone in fact, as long as they have a simple computer with a blockchain address, I can send them Bitcoin and they can use that for survival. They can use that for, to pay whatever they wanna pay. You see, the powerful thing about Bitcoin is you have choices, you have options. It also brings a question what Edward Snowden talks about, privacy. We've seen what he released a couple of years ago. They're spying on everything that you do. Every message that you say in Facebook, everything you say in Gmail, they're listening to you. But with Bitcoin, 
you're voting to have privacy. You're voting to have security. So if I'm looking, you know, on my address over here, and let's say I know of an individual in Venezuela or Cambodia or Nigeria that needs help, and I know for a fact that they have corrupt banks, corrupt governments, and it's quite difficult for me to transfer fiat currency over there, I can literally send him in real time. He'll get it in 10, 15 minutes on his phone. And yeah, the more people that use it in Cambodia, Nigeria, the more network effect you get and the more people can create a peer-to-peer -peer economy. And that's the beneficial thing about it because there's nothing stopping from, say, you and I creating our own currency right now, our cryptocurrency called whatever, uh, the Toronto currency, and people in Toronto vote for it. When you buy vote for it, they use it. So let's say we have a million Torontonians who decide to use the Toronto cryptocurrency, and, it's, and it pretty much only has value in Toronto because we're changing in Toronto. That gives us a decentralized power. We're not the mercy of say the Federal Reserve System. We're not the mercy of quantitative easing. We're not the mercy of if a crash happens. Look at 2008 with the real estate crash in the United States. It's gonna happen again. There's gonna be a bigger global crash. You can just see it with interest rates. As soon as interest rates are south of a percent, that tells you a lot. As soon as they do QE, quantitative easing, that tells you a lot. Right now, there's a massive currency war going on with the renminbi, with Russia, uh, with um, the Eurozone, and also with North America. Just pay attention to that. But let's pause, uh, pause a second for cryptocurrency, okay? So just to summarize, a, it actually gives us a second choice, not controlled by the Federal Reserve System, but controlled by the network, controlled by us. Because we, as a group, we gave consensus to use Bitcoin or Ether or any other form of cryptocurrency. Number two, a form of privacy. It's not 100% private for Bitcoin. I would say it's synonymous, but there are other cryptocurrencies that are truly uh, private, such as Monero and Zcash. That's a whole different video. But what it gives you the option of is it gives you the option of freedom of choice as Milton Freedom talks about. See, I can now send money around the world uh, not telling people who I am by name. You may know my address, you even may figure out the sum I sent, but you don't know who I am, and that gives power to people. You know, we live in a bubble over here in North America. We're not under a totalitarian regime such as Iran, or even some places in China, or in Africa, or in Venezuela right now. You have to understand that the majority of the world, they live in a certain government society that they don't have the same freedoms that we do over here. So it's quite difficult for them to speak up. And this is why you're seeing a huge rise in Bitcoin in India, because Modi uh, demonetized two forms of currency or two notes in India, and they're doing a hard crackdown on the currency wars right now in India. And people are saying, hey, I don't want to be part of this system anymore. I don't want to be a slave to this. Let me opt into something else that's not controlled by cabal, but it's controlled by the network through our own consensus, us voting. So if we kind of evolve from there and look at blockchain, see what blockchain really does is it creates a system where it doesn't matter where you live, it doesn't matter your religion, it doesn't matter your political view, you can join a network and join a global peer-to-peer -peer system. See, the blockchain will enable you to have a digital identity. That does, I don't need to know your name. All I know that you are verified on the network as number ABC, whatever letter ABC, and that you are participating in a network and you're authentic. I don't need to know nothing about you. A, digital identity, cryptocurrency, logistics, and above all, what matters the most is decentralization. You see, if we know that there's a server across the street that has all the information, I can shut down the power to that server or destroy the server. However, with a blockchain, it's kind of like BitTorrent a little bit, but a little bit different, where everybody has the copy of the master copy of the system and is decentralized. So there's no server. And this is why I have such high hopes for this technology because let's say we want to go to Venezuela and help people, we can go in there, set up our own type of cryptocurrency called the Venezuelan coin, create a decentralized network for everybody, get everybody around the world to maybe uh, buy in with a bunch of Bitcoin and Ether for them, and now we can stimulate the Venezuelan coin and it can be decentralized and it's going to be quite difficult for evil regimes to shut them down. So yeah, why is Bitcoin so important? It gives you the power. It gives you the option, or as Milton Friedman says, it gives you the freedom of choice. This is power right here, and blockchain technology right now is just at the beginning. I'm gonna, I'm gonna predict this. We're gonna see in the future where we're gonna have micro payments online. We, you can pay literally like one penny with a, with a cryptocurrency through a smart contract that takes you seconds. So right now, YouTube sometimes pays their, uh, if you're a good content creator, they, they give you share revenue. Listen, it's still a platform and they're taking a piece of the pie. Imagine I have my own platform, and if you want to support me, you just pay me a couple of cents for every video out of your own cryptocurrency instantaneously. Where the world is heading, the world is heading away from middlemen people 
taking a piece of the pie for not really adding value for transactions. With blockchain technology, I don't need anybody in the middle to tell me you can have this transaction or you can't, or I'm gonna take 25% of this because I just exist. With blockchain, we call it a middleman killer, no intermediaries. We connect two parties together that mutually do, uh, mutually do a contract together. I provide value, you buy the value. I get 100% of the value, you get 100% of the value, as opposed to anybody in the middle. And this is why a lot of people are trying to figure out what to do with this technology right now. A lot of companies are worried, and they should be. And I think this is an empowering technology uh, for everybody. So my advice to you to get involved, a lot of people just, they read about it, get involved. Put your Bitcoin or Ethereum address below. Tell me what next video you want me to make. That's the stipulation. I'll send you some Bitcoin or Ethereum. Get involved, buy some stuff. Amazon's, uh, some stores on Amazon are accepting Bitcoin right now. Uh, Shopify, depending on the store you have, you can, buy, uh, you can download a plugin for Shopify. You can pay by Bitcoin there. So slowly, stores are accepting Bitcoin. But what I see in the future is I'm seeing a true true reverting back to the old system where we used to do business as individuals as opposed to going grocery stores where hey if a neighbor's selling something right now i can go there from my phone send him some cryptocurrency and boom i buy the object so we're actually going back to how we were before with tribes and that's what blockchain technology is so great it actually creates tribes and it creates this communal type of community where we all can benefit from each other because of the network effect so i have high hopes for bitcoin it's been eight years strong it's still going it was the first it's always going to remain the first and if you're not involved in this space get involved because this technology the blockchain technology is going to help billions and billions of people around the world peace